Hey Nesters, welcome back to the channel. Today I am sharing with you another Betty Crocker vintage cookbook. I recently picked up a pretty good sized set of these at a church rummage sale and I decided to go ahead and go in to them a little bit deeper with you and do a bit of a flip through so you guys can get a better idea of what the difference is between each cookbook is if you guys are ever interested in trying to purchase one that way you guys know which one you want to get so we'll go ahead and get started so the cookbook we are going through today is this Betty Crocker's new picture cookbook and this was definitely my favorite color that we found today this is what the binding looks like on the side I think this is gonna look really nice displayed with my vintage items and I really enjoy the binder style of these cookbooks versus, you know, the regular cookbooks. I think the binders are fun. So we will go ahead and jump into this and see what this one is like. So this is the second Betty Crocker book I picked up. This is the New Picture Cookbook. And this just happened to be the most eye appealing to me. I love the blue and pink coloring on it. It just really seemed to pull me in. This one is a little beat up, but it's not taped together. So it has a gorgeous binding. And obviously I will display this in with my Pyrex and vintage cookware. So that will look very nice. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what this one is like. And if this one even has a date to it, the other one was missing pages. Uh, this starts on page five. So I don't know. I assume that means there's pages missing again. Yeah. <laughs> kitchen know how so again there's more hints for homemakers so I really enjoyed that definitely I'm the type of person that can sit here and read through cookbooks <laughs> I really enjoy it and we have how to and there's tips for freezing and how to wrap things for freezing meal planning this is good that they added this in because I know meal planning is something a lot of us struggle with you don't, you know, especially if you don't like to eat the same things over and over again, which is my problem. <laughs> I don't want to eat the same thing every week. You know, some people just plan out a meal, you know, maybe a week or two of meals and they'll just rotate it. And I'm sure that works, but I, I like trying new recipes and stuff. So I do struggle with meal planning sometimes. Again, we got the appetizers here. What every cook needs to know about appetizers. This is what the recipes do look like. Again, they're kind of short versions and just little clippets of information. So it's kind of nice to just straight to the point. It's very, very handy. Betty Crocker knew we didn't have much time to cook, right? <laughs> we have this cool one here, beverages. Beverages for hospitality, time-saving tips. Look at that, a fruit frappe. For some reason, I just feel like a frappe is a new thing. I guess they've always been around. <laughs> Mold cider, that's always good. Glamour touches for beverages. We have quick breads. <laughs> the images in this is interesting. Uh, I feel like the other book, I like the imagery a lot better than this one, even though this one has a better cover to it, but they're still fun. For every quick, for every cook needs to know about quick breads. So I would say this one doesn't seem as, you know, the inside doesn't seem as nice as the other one to me. Um, this is, once again, the food photography has come a long way, but a lot of carbs I'm seeing. <laughs> a lot of carbs, carb-friendly dinners, right? Yeast breads, again very popular back then. We have cakes. <laughs> yeah, the, the other book definitely had the better imagery on it. We have an exquisite coconut cake. I'm not a huge fan of coconut. I like to cook with coconut oil, but I'm not really huge into eating coconut myself. So we have frostings. A, ooh, is this a missing page from the front? Check out the kitchen though. Very cool. So what else do we have? We have a cookie section here. I feel like I'm, I, I sound a little bit disappointed because I just went to the other one and I really liked how it was set up better. But there's definitely, it looks like there's still plenty of good recipes to sift through and try. 
We have desserts. I do wonder between the two which came out first because they definitely did much better on the other one, I think. <laughs> what every cook needs to know about eggs. So it seems like they keep the same theme in all these books. All the tabs seem to be roughly the same. Meats and fish. They do have the images down here of the different cuts of where, you know, it is located on the animal. So that's kind of handy. Good information. This is a methods of meat cookery. Roasting, broiling, pan broiling, pan frying, moist heat methods, braising, and cooking in liquid. Who knew you can cook meat so many ways? Not me, because I don't really cook it. <laughs> what everyone, what every cook needs to know about pies. Well, we know we need to make them in a hurry so we can eat them, right? Serve with flair. I wonder if this is from the bicentennial year. Every time I see eagles and flags, I always think bicentennial. <laughs> 1976. So yeah, this one's a little harder to use, it seems. The tabs are very, you know, kind of off. You can't really flip through them as nicely as the other one. We do have the salad section here. Sauces. And this sauce section, I don't know, they do have some for desserts here. So it would also be interesting if they changed out their recipes, you know, from each year of the cookbook edition or if they ever had any repeats. I would assume they're different recipes, but they might have just, you know, recycled some. We'll definitely see Irene's caramel sauce. Soups. What do we got for soups in this one? Canadian cheese soup. Manhattan clam chowder. What is this? Mul Mulligatini soup? Mulligatini soup? I don't know what that is. Old fashioned vegetable soup. But it's, it's just a simple, it's more of a minimalist cookbook is what I would describe this as. Yeah, that one, you know, unfortunately, I, I feel like I didn't get as good of vibes off of other than the cover is very gorgeous for decorating. So it might just be sitting on my shelf like that. <laughs> so what did you guys think? Did you like this one? If you saw my first video, I would like to know if you guys prefer the one I showed you last time or this one because they are a little bit different in style on the inside. And yeah, so I thought they were both really nice. I did prefer the images in the other one where it was more 1950s style and I believe this one is more from the 70s, but the binder is definitely way prettier. So I'm gonna enjoy displaying this on my shelf anyways. And yeah, I have a few more to share with you in this little mini series. Initially, this was not gonna be a mini series, but when I recorded this all in one shot, it ended up being over an hour long. So I knew that'd be a ridiculous amount of time for someone to sit and watch me just flipping through cookbooks. So I decided to just go ahead and break it up per book. I thought it might be interesting to some people. I know the book hauls aren't really the most popular on my channel. People aren't as into that as my thrift hauls and yard sale hauls, but I like cookbooks and books, so I feel like I'll share every now and then, especially during the yard sale season where I pick up so many. And some of you guys do enjoy it, so I'm happy to share that with you. So be sure to hit that thumbs up on your way out if you are enjoying these videos. That way I know you actually want to see more of these like this in the future. And hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, if you're new to my channel. And we will catch you in the next one. Bye.